The next thing we're going to build is the time display, which shows us both how far we are through the video and how long the video is. If I play this video, you can see the seconds go up as the video continues to play. All right, and that's what we're going to build. So let's go to our code. The first thing we need to do is create our time element. It's going to be similar to our progress element, and that we're going to have a container element, and that's going to be a div that will give an ID of time. All right, and that's going to hold the two different times, both the current time and the duration. And then instead of divs, I'm going to use the span element because we just want the two times to sit next to each other. And we have the first one, an ID of current time. This can be our current time display. And, and that span. And I'm going to give it a starting value of 0, 0, colon, 0, 0. So 0 minutes and 0 seconds. And then I'm going to do another span, and we'll give that an ID of duration. And that's going to be our duration display. And we'll end that span. And give it the same default of 0, 0, colon, 0, 0. That's what we need for our time display in the HTML. Let's go to our CSS and style it a little bit. So our display, the ID was time. And we're going to give it a width of 120 pixels. And that will make it fit just right into the end of the control bar. And then we also want to align the text center. So it sits right in the middle of that 120 pixels. That's what we need for the CSS. If we go to our JavaScript, first we're going to create another section like we've done before. We'll call it time display. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually cheat a little bit. And what I have here in another file is a function that's going to allow us to format the time. And I'm just going to copy and paste that into our JavaScript. It's really not worth kind of writing it out step by step and digging into exactly what it's doing. You can feel free to read through it if you want, but basically what it does is we pass it a number in seconds and it creates that 00 colon 00 format for us. So we can just trust that that's going to work and you can feel free to copy and paste this function as well. So then we're going to bind another event and it's going to be in our video element again and it's going to be the time update event that we used for the play progress so we're using the same event for the current time that we use for the play progress and that kind of makes sense we'll pass it a function of what we want to happen and then that and so what we want to happen is to change the content of that current time display. And so first we need to reference that current time display, which we called current time. And then we can use the jQuery HTML method to change the inner content of that span tag. And then here's where we're going to call that format time function. So inside here, I'm going to go ahead and call format time. And to this, we're going to pass the video's current time. So we're in the video scope because we bound the time update event to video. So I can use the this variable and call current time. So that will give us the current time in the video in seconds. So we're then passing that number in seconds to the format time function which will format that in the 00, 0 colon 00, 0 format and pass it back as the new content for the current time span tag. We can end that. Let's go ahead and save that and just check to make sure that's actually working. Go to our browser and reload the page we're working on. We've got that 00, 0 colon 00. 0. And if we play, yeah, we can see the current time go up. Nice, I'll pause that. 
I just noticed I missed one element from our HTML. So just go back and add that quickly. And I just wanted a slash after our first set of numbers so that there's a divider between the two numbers. So I save that and go back, reload the page. We now have that nice slash to kind of make it a little bit more obvious which number is which. Now let's go back to our JavaScript and we'll do the duration display. And for that, we can basically copy exactly what we just did for the current time. And we'll paste that. And the event that we're going to bind to is the duration change event, which is another event that's called by the video element. And it's triggered anytime the duration changes, including when it first loads the duration. So there may not be a lot of times when the duration actually changes throughout the video, but we want it to change right when it first loads that duration the first time. Then the element we want to change is the duration span tag that we created. And then again, we want to change the content. So we're using the HTML method and the format time function. We're going to pass the video's duration this time to the format time function. So we're passing the duration in seconds to the format time, which will make it the 00, 00, 00 format. And then it'll change the content of our duration span to that number. All right, let's save that. Look that up really quick. And reload the page. All right, and we can see as soon as the video loads, it loads that duration and changes the duration time display to the total time of the video. And if we play the video, we can see the current time go up. Okay, great. So our time display is working now, and our player, at least for this tutorial, is finished. From here, you can continue to build on your player and make it look exactly how you want. There's also a number of open source HTML5 video players out there that you can look to for inspiration if you want to take your player to the next level.